Oops, I just jumped in and forgot my microphone. Hang on one second. <laughs> okay, I'll start talking anyway, but I don't put my microphone on before I get too far in because I know the quality of sound will be better. So hang on one second. <sighs> so busy, preoccupied today with other stuff. I forgot to do this. So let me plug yourself in and hopefully it will sound. Cover your ears for a second. I'm plugging in. Now you should be able to hear me okay. Let me start over. Hi, welcome to my broadcast. Um, this is episode number 774, and we're going to talk about boundaries today. So I'll give you the full title in a moment. Let me just introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. Uh, my name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't figured that out already. And uh, I am a best-selling author of the book 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples about love and relationships. It's a game changer. It's best-selling, of course. I'm also an inspirational speaker and relationship attraction expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine, which is why I'm so informed, not as the word, so passionate about the work I do with women. And also what led to these talks I started over two years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. And today we're going to have some fun. I haven't talked about this for a while, actually. Well, I haven't talked about it specifically. I've talked around this for a while, so it's time to jump in. So the topic today, and again, this is episode number 774, um, getting up there, almost 800. And the topic today is uh, boundaries are not just for countries. And why your boundaries may be getting, uh, why, when I say why your boundaries may may be weakened or may not be functioning, it was something about boundaries. I rem- the title will be out there. You can see what, read the title. I don't need to reiterate the title. It's out in the front of the broadcast. So let me start with talking about what this is. Boundaries have more than one connotation. One part of boundaries is what you could call personal space. So it's a physical um, comfort zone, so to speak. Where if somebody moves inside that space, you feel your, your energy has been invaded energetically. That's one form of boundaries. But there's a lot more going on besides that. And I want to investigate, explore, explain, solve some of the problems with boundaries and other levels. Because boundaries are not just about physical space. They're very much about physical space in some situations. But also boundaries have a, an, an impact in your emotional and mental sp- space too. Meaning that boundaries can be... Um, let me say another way. When you are swayed by somebody else's opinion without realizing you've said yes to what they're saying, your boundaries have been crossed or, over, or your borders have been crossed, so to speak. Someone's walked across your boundaries energetically and pulled you into their way of thinking. I'll let you know ahead of time, I'm going to tie boundaries into codependency because it's really part of the same conversation. But boundaries are basically this place that a lot of people don't have defined. In fact, a lot of people I know, their framework for their lives is very fuzzy. So people can walk into their space physically, energetically, emotionally, mentally with a little no effort. And so when somebody comes into your space, if you don't have firm boundaries, you don't feel like you have control. So losing control is part of that boundary requirement as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm and by the way, if you haven't noticed, I'm sort of planting little seeds along the way or along the way, just to be visually better, that are basically tied to codependency, which is tied into this form of boundaries, because boundaries also is autonomy. Meaning when you have clear boundaries, you have dominion over your space, you have autonomy, you have ownership of who you are, which is part of what I believe the work I do is, well, it's not part of what I believe we all need to do is part of the work I do with my clients, because the the thing I talk about with self-love and self-care and self-support, I keep talking about a lot lately, which is fundamental to my coaching, why I'm so passionate about this, is largely tied to the support structures you put in place to have healthy boundaries, to have autonomy, and to be self-sufficient, which everybody can benefit from. I think that was clear enough. So boundaries are part of this conversation because when you don't have boundaries, first of all, you want to be aware of the fact you don't have boundaries, which you can I'll give you some clues on what that's like, the problem ones already gave you, but also, it's a place where you can put some effort into restoring your boundaries, which will then assist you in coming back to yourself and having autonomy. So first of all, a lack of boundaries, as I said, is a, is a f- kind of a fuzzy experience, is, which is not exactly a technical term, maybe it is a technical term, but having fuzzy boundaries is a place where you find yourself being um, wishy-washy, so to speak. Um, people who don't have decisive action plans where they're very floppy in what they're thinking, sort of flip-flopping is the term they used in politics I know for a while. I don't mean being unattached 
or being flexible. That's not what I'm talking about here. What I'm speaking about is having a um, a lack of self-will almost. Hang on, this please. <coughs> Excuse me. Tend to cover the microphone so you didn't get that through your ears. <laughs> Weather's been weird today. It's supposed to be sunny and hot and it's gotten hazy and cool today, which isn't a bad thing. Just let's get some work done. Um, but I know it's sneezing a bit today too. Anyway, back to the topic. So as I mentioned, the conversation around boundaries or lack of boundaries is having the sense of being flip-flopping or wishy-washy or basically un, um, unguided. If you're someone who's very unattached and is not particularly invested in particular opinions in one way or the other, that's not about weak boundaries, that's different. Weak boundaries are where you don't hold autonomy over your own viewpoints. We don't have autonomy over your own, um, I won't say beliefs, but philosophies that you get easily swayed by other people. Now, I know from past experience that when I was younger, I would definitely hold fast to an opinion until somebody gave me a different one and I didn't switch the other opinion and then back and forward. That was with boundaries, frankly. So I've been there. Now, coming from a place where I was bullied in high school, as I've mentioned before, that's one way of getting, you're basically getting boundaries beaten down, literally and figuratively. So for some of us, boundaries may have been, your boundaries may have been stressed by outside impact, whether it was through trauma, tragedy, um, challenge, upset, abuse, bullying or something else. So I'm saying that, saying that to say that not having healthy boundaries isn't something that I'm going to say is, a, is your fault because sometimes it's happened because of the things you've been through. I know from personal experience. But the thing is, being past that point, you can step into the place where your um, governance of your boundaries can be reframed. You can change it because boundaries are not something that are permanent in their um, depletion. So as I mentioned about your boundaries being weakened, you can rebuild. We have the technology. <laughs> we can rebuild it. So here's some things to think about. Actually, let me give you a couple more illustrations of why boundaries, we can, sorry, a couple of illustrations of what we can boundaries can feel like. So again, being easily swayed by other people's opinions, by not holding true to what you believe is real. In fact, sometimes being very unable to grasp that. It also means that you may be persuaded to do things you don't want to do. And for abuse victims, this happens a lot where they may be on a date with somebody and that person's very forceful or persuasive and because your boundaries are weak you say yes and go along with what you don't really want to do because of what they because of the power of their ego because some part of boundaries also is it's almost a sense of um i would say defense but when you have strong boundaries somebody else's opinion no matter how aggressive or upset or how loud they are doesn't affect you well it might affect you in the sense you might recoil but it won't control you that's the word because weak boundaries tends to mean you give away your control you give away control of your destiny of your direction of your life some people are good employees because they have weak boundaries they should become very easily controlled some can control the strings so to speak and that's the thing that's the extreme of that sense of having no boundaries because especially from the abuse uh, pathway those people who go through abuse oftentimes don't have strong boundaries in that situation. They may have very strong boundaries other places because of the reaction to the abuse, but in the situations where their um, familiar territory comes up in the experiences of relationship, connection, conversation, communication, experience with other people, those boundaries start to collapse again because the wiring is in there to keep them collapsed. So having weaker boundaries can be annoying to painful and everything in between. So let me speak to some solutions and some pathways to get out of that situation. Because I don't like leaving you hanging in pain and suffering, as you may know from my broadcast. And by the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast, I do this every day. And every single time, to the best of my ability, I leave you with some next steps, some action plans, and some goals you can take to make your life better. And also offer you some links how to reach me as well, which I'll do at the end of the broadcast. So some solutions and pathways through. First of all, as I mentioned, becoming aware is the first step which I often say about my talks, is when you become aware of some things, when you can take the first step to go, oh, this is happening, I can do something about that. Because when you're unconscious to it, there's nothing to do because you don't think about it. I think it's kind of obvious. So having clear boundaries starts with, first of all, becoming clear that your boundaries aren't, sorry, becoming aware that your boundaries are not clear. That's first. 
Awareness is always the first step. 99.9% .9 of the time. Second step is to become clear about what it is that happens right before your boundaries go down. Because what it may be, it may appear to be for some experiences you have, if your boundaries seem fine, and they are fine in most situations, but then in one particular scenario, one or two particular places, your boundaries seem to disappear. And you tend to be influenced or impacted by other people which you don't other places. So first of all, second step again, can be, if that's the way it is for you, is to become aware of what happens right before that happens, what happens right before your boundaries disappear, or right before you become aware that your boundaries have disappeared, as I mentioned. So again, become aware your boundaries are, are weakened or gone, then become aware of what it is that happens right before that. Because what's gonna be the focus point is, if your boundaries are, are strong, then they disappear, strong, then they disappear, is you want to know what it is that causes that thing to happen. There's a, there's a cause and effect. The effect is your boundaries go down. The cause is something else is influencing that or you're reacting to something or something you become aware of is the cause that then the effect is your boundaries diminish or disappear. If your boundaries are always down, then it's a different perspective because there's no triggering mechanism. It's just a matter of if you don't have any boundaries for some reason that may cause from what, whatever may be caused by it. So I mentioned some possible causes. So to come back to the beginning of that, if you haven't got boundaries, you're in a perfect place to start building them. And the first place that I would talk about is about having agreements with yourself. Now I did a talk about agreements a week or two ago now, two, three weeks ago about the power of agreements keeping because it's one of the most powerful places to build trust with yourself. Self-trust is largely built by keeping your agreements because when you can trust the word you say, you trust yourself, like, duh, kind of obvious. Agreements are the word you speak, either internally or externally. So boundaries is another piece of that, meaning that when you start to keep agreements with yourself by making sure the boundaries you make are important, Sorry, making sure the yeah you know, I just said, said making sure the the boundaries you make, making sure the agreements you make, or making sure the agreements you state. There are too many makings in there. Making sure the boundaries you state are kept, and particularly the ones with yourself is the first place you want to start doing this because you do agreements with, agreements with yourself anytime because you don't need other people around. Yes, you can make agreements with other, with other, agreements with other people, but the biggest thing I want to let you know about is when you're making agreements you have the power, in fact, you have the right, and it's one of the best things you can do, is to say no. Meaning that when agreements are offered, especially by other people, but even with yourself, because you might choose to do things that aren't, aren't for your highest and best good. So by having the awareness that you can just simply go, you know what, I'm not gonna do that. I'm saying no to that agreement. Again, internally or externally. Either way, by saying no, you can clear yourself of that space. And by saying no, what you start to do is build a healthier boundary. It's a really powerful tool, and a very under, it's under, under, underrated maybe, or just ignored. But the power of no is one of the key steps to start building boundaries. In sexual experiences, with romantic intentions, if you're going on dates, particularly for the women who go on dates, and the man seems too forceful, the power, to, the power and the freedom to be able to say no, and to stand in that truth, is a very firm boundary that you create. So that's one of the keys to rebuilding boundaries is to, to have the ability to say no, actually it's two, to say no and also to make new agreements and have agreements that you keep because it builds self-trust. And agreement keeping, agreement keeping that creates self-trust also assists in having your boundaries be restored. When you trust yourself, your boundaries become clear and become firmer. So, I'm just thinking of any other ways because it's it that's like one major path I recommend highly. It's probably the most passionate one to talk about because it's the simplest. It's a matter of you just making agreements or not making agreements and then keeping the ones you make, making them clear, making them definable, making them achievable, and completing them because you build that commitment to yourself, you build that trust for yourself. Secondarily, by saying no, you can make fewer agreements so you can actually make the other ones more easily. But also, by having that place, you have a firmer place inside yourself, which is firm saying, I know who I am, I know what I believe, and I know when I want to say yes to something, I know when I want to say no to something. And this is the thing I mentioned at the beginning about having being easily swayed. When you're clear with your boundaries and you're clear in your agreement keeping, you can say yes to something or say no to something very easily. And it becomes clearer and more defined, which is what boundaries are really about. Because when you have boundaries, 
you have a distinct sense of um, freedom, actually. It's kind of this thing about how sometimes, um, what is it, discipline is freedom, commitment is freedom, one of those things. Boundaries the same way. By having healthy boundaries, you're much more free because you, you know who you are, you know the space you occupy, and you know the beingness that you fulfill. Boundaries are actually more very powerful, but they're interwoven with the idea about trust and agreements as well, as I mentioned. And I'm just, I'm just also padding to see if I can remember something else that fits this. I haven't had any other downloads about what also creates healthy boundaries. Let me sit for a moment. Ah, yeah, there is one. I mentioned earlier with boundaries that um, part of the challenge is that it can sometimes be, uh, the boundaries can be weakened or destroyed from past traumatic experiences, be it abuse, hurt, wounding, bullying, etc., etc. If those experiences were what caused your boundaries to be depleted or removed or destroyed, getting support or doing the work to heal those past wounds is one of the best ways to help yourself rebuild your boundaries. Because it was there's an association between the past wound and the weakened boundary that until you get rid of the past wound, the boundary can't be restored fully. So as much as I'm a, pedant, a pedantic reminder that keeping your agreements is a healthy thing, doing the work to heal your past hurts, wounds, upset, memories that are not helping your boundaries be firm, is a primary focus. If you are able to do that yourself, wonderful. I highly recommend you get counsel, support, coaching, something else to help you get through it. If it's big stuff to get the support you need. Um, because you don't want to keep that um, trap door open, so to speak because that energetic allows that negative energy to come back in again. That's why boundaries can be very challenging for people who've been through that stuff because there's an, op there's an open wound there that can be reaccessed. When you start to heal and transform those past wounds, then the boundaries become stronger because there's no way in anymore. It becomes clearer. I, the only answer, the, the, I can say this. I'm going to put some, things in the, some links in the comments for you to look at if you're interested because all the things I recommend in my work will help you with boundary restoration and self-trust and keep you moving forward. So just so you know, I'm going to put some links in the comments. It's called, they are called, called calls to actions because I know I'm known for that. But I'll make sure you get the value of these. First of all, um, which is, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the, I'll do the four. So first of all, I'll, get, I'll let you know about my self-love guided meditation because a part of this practice is restoring the trust and support of yourself. By doing a disciplined 30-day practice, first of all, it builds your trust in yourself because you're keeping agreements. Secondly, it builds a self-support structure in yourself because you learn, learn to love and support and care about yourself. And third, it'll actually change your relationship with yourself because you start to really fall in love with who you are. That's one of the courses, one of my um, products, sounds so corny. One of my offerings, so I'll put that in the comments. Secondly, um, coming home to yourself, the course that I've been talking about a lot is my new group program that I'm launching. That is still in um, enrollment phase, so you can still get into that. It's going to, right now it's 17, actually maybe 18 now. Hmm, yeah, I think it is. Aspects of self support practices that will help you restore your own life back to yourself in so many different ways, and boundaries is part of that. Um, that second, third, I mentioned my book already. That I'll put in the comments. That was the one I mentioned at the beginning. I recommend checking my book out because they'll help you in all sorts of areas about love and relationships. And fourthly, just reach out for a conversation. There'll be a link in there as well, which is for a chat. Basically, it's a complimentary clarity conversation with me so we can talk and I can give you some more guidance and more personal to you and see if there's some next steps that I can help you with. Those will be in the comments because I believe I can help you. And I believe you can take the help and change your life for the better. That should keep you busy. Um, I hope this has made some sense to you. This is one of those topics that doesn't get covered very often, but I became very clear today I need to talk about it. So here it is. This is my daily Facebook Live. If in case you haven't seen my talks before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. My business page is where the replays live, which is barryselby.author. And also I have a YouTube channel. By the way, my personal, my, my business page, please like the page. My, my um, YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby also, please subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, and on there you can find all the replays. You can search through them more easily on YouTube than you can on Facebook, just to be honest. And all my almost 800 broadcasts are there as well. So I think that makes sense, and I've given you enough to keep work on. This is a big piece of the puzzle, as you may have realized. Um, I, may, I may talk about this a bit more because it's such a fundamental piece 
about being healthy in the world and healthy in your own life, that I'm clear that you take this one on, it will change your life for the better. With that, I thank you for watching. Um, I hope it's got some value. Any questions, thoughts, comments, etc., please put them below and respond when I sign off. If you want to share it with somebody, feel free to do that as well. Um, and I hope it's been of value to you. If you have any questions, please let me know. I am here to support you. That's my calling, my service, my work. And I invite you to take care of yourself. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, take care. I'll see you soon. Bye.